Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shannon Duel Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering 1 Samuel 7 through 9 and Luke 9 18 through 36. Father, I just ask for clarity, voice, and articulation, and a smooth reading of your Word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. 1 Samuel 7 So the men of kerith Jerem came and took up the ark of the Lord. They brought it to Anamdad's house on the hill, and consecrated Eleazar his son to guard the ark of the Lord. The ark remained at kerith Jerem a long time. Twenty years in all, Samuel subdues the Philistines at Mizpah. Then all the people of Israel turned back to the Lord. So Samuel said to all of the Israelites, If you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then rid yourselves of any foreign gods and the Asherthoths, and commit yourselves to the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. And so the Israelites put away their Baalists and the Asherthels, and served the Lord only. Then Samuel said, Assemble all Israel at Methuselah, and I will intercede with the Lord for you. When they had assembled at Mitzvah, they drew water and poured it out before the Lord. On that day they fasted, and there they confessed, We have sinned against the Lord. Now Samuel was serving as the, a leader and of the Israelites at Mitzvah. Now when the Philistines heard that the Israelites had assembled, at Mesba, the ruler of the Philistines came up to attack them. When the Israelites heard of it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. They said to Samuel, Do not stop crying out to the Lord our God for us, that he may rescue us from the hand of the Philistines. Then Samuel took a suckling lamb, and he sacrificed it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf, and the Lord answered him. While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to engage Israel in battle. But that day the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them into such a panic that they were rooted before the Israelites. The men of Israel rushed out of Mesva, and they poured pursued the uh, Philistines, slaughtering them along the way to a point below beth Kerr. Then Samuel took a stone, and he set it up between Methva and Shen. He named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they stopped invading Israel's territory. Throughout Solomon's lifetime, uh, Sam, uh, throughout Samuel's lifetime, the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. The town from Ekron to Gath that the Philistines had captured from Israel were restored to Israel, and Israel delivered the neighboring territory from the hands of the Philistines, and there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Mm. Samuel continued as Israel's leader all the days of his life. From year to year he went on a circuit from Bethel to Gilgal and to Mesbeth, judging Israel in all those places. But he always returned back to Ramah, where his home was, and there he also held court for Israel, and he built an altar there to the Lord. Israel asked for a king, 1 Samuel 8. 
When Samuel grew older, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah, and they served as at Beersheba. But his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. So the elders of Israel gathered together, and they came to Samuel at Ramah. And they said to him, You are old, and your sons are not following your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said, Give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. And so he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you that they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king, as they have done from, from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them, solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses and they will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to the com be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow his grounds and re reap his harvest and still others to make weapons of war and equip of equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. He will take a tenth of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his officials and attendants. Your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he will take from his own for his own use and he will take a tenth of your flocks and your and you yourselves will become his slaves and when that day comes you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen but the lord will not answer you in that day but the people refused to listen to samuel no they said we want a king over us, and then we will be like all the other nations, with a king to lead us and to go out before us. Well, then we will be the uh, king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. And when Samuel heard all that the people said he repeated it before the Lord and the Lord answered listen to them and give them a king then Samuel said to the Israelites everyone go back to your own town Samuel anoints Saul 1 Samuel 9 there was a Benjaminite a man of standing whose name was Kish son of Abel the son of Zero, the son of Berkoth, and the son of Ephion of Benjamin. Kish had a son named Saul, as handsome as a young man as could be found anywhere Israel, and he was a anywhere in Israel, and he was a head taller than anyone else. Now the donkeys belonging to Saul's father, Kish, were lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, 
Take one of the servants with you and go and look for the donkeys. And so he pa uh, passed through the hill country of Ephraim and through the area around Shalisha. But they did not find them. They went on into the district of Sahalim, but the donkeys were not there. Then they passed through the territory of Benjamin, but they did not find him there. And when they reached the district of Azup, Zal, uh, Saul said to the servant who was with him, Come, let's go back, or may my father will stop thinking about the donkeys and start worrying about us. But the servant replied, Look, in this town there is a man of God. He is highly respected, and everything he says comes true. Let's go there now. Perhaps he will tell us what way to take. And Saul said to his servant, If we go, we can't go. We can. If we go, what can we give the man? The food is our in our sacks is gone. We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? The servant answered him again. Look, he said. I have a quarter of a shekel of silver. I will give it to the man of God. And so that he will tell us which way to go. And formerly in Israel, if someone went to inquire of God, they would say, Come, let us go to the seer, because the prophet of today used to be called the seer. Good, Saul said to his servant, come, let's go. So they set out for the town where the man of God was. And as they were going up the hill to the town, they met some young women coming out to draw water. And they asked them, is there a seer in here? Uh, here? Well, he is, they answered. He's ahead of you. Hurry now. He has just come out uh, to our town today, for the people have a sacrifice at his place. And as soon as they entered the town, you will find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. The people will not begin eating until he comes, because he must bless the sacrifice. Afterwards, those who are invited will eat. Go up now, you should find him about this time. And so they went up to the town. And as they were entering it, and there was Samuel coming toward them on his way up to the high place. Now the day before Saul came, uh, Saul came the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him ruler over my people Israel, and he will deliver them from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked on my pe people, for their cry has reached me. And then Samuel caught sight of Saul, and the Lord said to him, This is the man. I spoke to you about, he will govern my people. Saul approached Samuel in the gateway and asked, Would you please tell me where the seer, the seer's house is? I am the seer, Samuel said. Well, go up ahead of me to the high place, for today you are to eat with me, and in the morning I will send you on your way and tell you, all that you that is in your heart well as for the donkeys you lost three days ago do not worry about them they have been found and to whom and to whom is all the desire of Israel turned if not to you and your whole family lying Samuel answered, I mean Saul answered, but I 
uh, but am I not a Benjamin from the smallest tribe of Israel? And is not my clan the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why do you say such a thing to me? Then Samuel brought Saul and his servant into the hall, and they seated them at the head of those who were invited, about thirty in number. Samuel said to the cook, Bring the piece of meat I gave you, the one I told you to lay aside. And so the cook took up the thigh with with what was on it and set it in front of Saul. Samuel said, Here is what has been kept for you. Eat, because it was set aside for you for this occasion from the time I said I have invited guests. And Saul dined with Samuel that day. After that they came down from the high place to the town and Samuel talked with Saul on the roof of his house. They ro um, rose about daybreak, and Sa Samuel called to Saul on the roof, Get ready, and I will send you on your way. And when Saul got ready, he and Sa Samuel went outside together. And as they were going down to the edge of the town, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the servant to go ahead of us. And the servant did so. But you stay here for a while, so that I may give you a message from God. Uh, that was First Samuel 17 through 19. Now we will be turning to Luke 19, uh, uh, sorry, Luke 9, 18. Luke 9, 18. Okay, here we go. Luke 9, 18. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Once, when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. And Jesus predicts his death. Jesus stri strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. And he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. And then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What God is... What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose it or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of and them. And when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. So truly I tell you, some of uh, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. The Transfiguration About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him, and he went up on a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the apprentice... Uh, the, as he was praying... The appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. 
whiter than white. Two men, Moses and Elijah, happened uh, to appear in glorious splendor, splendor talking with Jesus, and they spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. And as the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud, saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves, and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. And that was Samuel, uh, first, uh, first Samuel seven through nine, and Luke nine eighteen through thirty six. Go to sleep. Which concludes the Bible with Briscoe for today. Now tomorrow we will be returning, and we will be reading First uh, Samuel ten through twelve, and Luke nine thirty seven through sixty two. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I'd also like for to encourage you to share it with uh, everyone you know. And uh, as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow because we will be here god willing and we hope that you are